So this is a $60,000 guitar, a very rare 1962 Fender Strat, all original in the beautiful color of Fiesta Red. And if you think this guitar sounds great, well, I just saved you $59,600 because what you heard was actually a Squire Classic Vibe, which comes in at $400. Okay, and let's not milk it. I'm sure we all want to hear how does that 62 sound playing the same loop? Well... Hi friends, today is an exciting day. I'm launching my new guitar course, Electric Elevation, but more on that at the end of this video. So it's not often that you have four exactly the same guitars in the studio and they really are all the same. It's an early 60s Fiesta Red Stratocaster, but only one of these is actually from that period and the others, well, they try to get as close as possible, but then on different budgets. So how close do they get to that original? Let's find out. So guitar one. It's the Squire, it's coming in at $400 and it's definitely not a bad guitar. I've used this particular one for the giant guitar string shootout we did. So yes, indeed, <laughs> I have another one identical to this. So if you haven't seen that shootout, make sure to check it out. And it's a bit painful to say, but there are some issues with this instrument, especially if you compare it directly to the other ones on the wall. this new Fender American Vintage 2. We're making a big leap right now, all the way up to $2,000, but it is a small step compared to $60,000. So according to Fender, this presents a remarkably accurate take on the 61 Fender Strat and meticulously voiced year-specific pickups. And please remember this because this is an interesting take. guitar. So if at any point in the past six years you've seen any of my videos, I'm absolutely sure you've seen this guitar. It wasn't in particularly good condition when I bought it. It really needed a refret and a lot of tender loving care and I paid around $2,500 for it. My life savings at the time. But now you're lucky to find one under $5,000. It's crazy. And I just keep coming back to this instrument. I love strats and it's hard to imagine that almost 70 years ago Leo Fender designed the perfect well, al almost perfect guitar. So each of these three guitars tries to get close to that mythical holy grail pre-CBS era Strat. And today I'm lucky enough to have in my studio this fully original 1962 pre-CBS Fiesta Red Stratocaster. marks the golden age of Fender before the company was sold to CBS and strats built between 1954 and 1965 are considered to be so good that to the date we still see it as the epitome of guitar building and there is indeed that mythical air around these instruments I remember when I played one of the very first time at Norman's rare guitars and it was it was very cool Supposedly the guitars have the best tones, superb playability and tons of mojo. It's just the best of the best a Stratocaster can be, right? So let's play them back to back.
before we discuss any tonal differences that are actually way bigger than I expected, what is it in these early 60s strats that, it, that is so special? Well, some say the 62 is the best year of the strat, like the perfect evolution, that moment in time where everything came together to this one instrument. And I have no idea myself because you would have to play a lot of guitars from that period and compare them all back to back to come to such a conclusion. But maybe it is because the Strat saw some significant design changes, especially in the first few years. So it started in 1954 with a maple neck and an ash body, with a two-tone sunburst and a single ply pickguard. And two years later, in 1956, they introduced the alder bodies. The wood was easier to work with and more readily available. Two years later, again, the lacquer turned to the three-tone sunburst. And a year later, in 1959, they added the rosewood slab board on the necks. This was a thicker piece of rosewood glued on the neck. This was also the year the single-ply pickguard that was prone to warping over time got replaced by the three-ply pickguard and they introduced different colors like this Fiesta Red. So all these little design changes resulted into this particular model, the early 62 Stratocaster. Then going forward halfway 62, they swapped that thicker piece of rosewood on the neck for a thinner piece of veneer, probably to save costs. There were also a lot of subtle changes here and there that a lot of experts know everything about, but I'm not an expert, but I think it's like different pots, different pickups during the years. But all this led to 1965, the year Leo Fender sold the company to CBS. After which mass productions and bigger margins became priority. And according to many, the quality of the instruments declined. So let's hear the 62 in all its glory. Is it really so special? <laughs> much body this guitar has. Unreal. It's like it's incredibly creamy, full and thick. And let's make the biggest jump possible. Let's compare it directly with the Squire. <laughs> don't agree with me right now, uh, I'm just giving my opinion. And if you don't agree with me, please feel free to let me know in the comments. But I rooted for them to be similar or close, but it's just hard to come to that conclusion. So Squire is where Fender houses the more affordable range of guitars. And you feel it immediately. They use more affordable woods and the plastics like the nuts and more affordable budget-friendly hardware like the bridge, the tuners, the pickups. And I actually think that that makes the most difference here. Somehow you feel the notes sound a bit more wonky and less balanced and tight. Also, it's hard to ignore that the more affordable the instrument, the more work it needs straight out of the box to make it play great. It just doesn't get the same attention the others get in the factory. <laughs> So let's bump spec massively. Here is the $2,000 Fender American Vintage to 1961 Stratocaster. So one year earlier than the 62. So we see an alder body, check. We see a rosewood fingerboard, check. We see only go three pickups, check. Even down to the vintage radius of the neck of 7.2 inch. That isn't even present 
on the other two guitars, but it is on the 62. So check again. So in terms of specs, this is remarkably accurate. So let's see how it compares in terms of tone. <laughs> guitar it plays very well it feels super solid a bit more chunky neck than the 62 but it really feels pretty much like any true vintage guitar but also weird because it is so new <laughs> and that's also a good thing you know it's in perfect condition and if nothing weird happens you can shred on it for the coming 60 years without any issues i mean i've played some terrible pre-cbs threads so it's definitely not a rule that all of them are awesome so please know that but now here's an interesting bit, because to me at least, this guitar does not necessarily have that vintage tone or vintage sound that I associate with vintage strats. I'm not saying that is a bad thing actually. It sounds lovely and bright with a lot of spark. <laughs> I'm not necessarily getting an early 60s vibe from these pickups, but maybe it all depends on what specific guitar you compare it with. But how I remember most of the pre-CBS strats I played, they usually have this really thick, fat bottom end, sometimes even leaning towards the muddy, with slightly scooped mids and pretty glassy highs without being overly bright. And well, this has the brightness but not really that super thick bottom end. But it sounds great nonetheless. So let's move on to my Fender Custom Shop Cunetto Relic. The Custom Shop started in 1987. So remember up till 85, the company had been under the reign of CBS. But now this new Custom Shop had to build instruments in line of the philosophy of Leo Fender and the original strats that rolled off the shelf in the 50s and the early 60s. So why did we hear that before, right? <laughs> anyway, they also made custom guitars and started doing signature models. I think Eric Clapton had the first one. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that. This guitar is one of the earlier relics Fender ever made. So apparently they just uh, sent over a bunch of parts to Vince Cunetto, who ran a small workshop. He relicked parts, sent them back to Fender, who then further assembled the guitar into the instruments they are today. So the logo is embossed in the headstock instead of stamped, as you can see over here. So what I love about the stone is that it's sort of, it's the perfect balance between everything. It's fat, it's not muddy, it's bright, but it's not too sharp. It's basically perfectly in the middle for me. fascinating playing these guitars back to back and before I reach my final conclusion sort of about these guitars I want to say that I love these specific guitars so much this Fiesta Red Body that it became the model for my brand new intermediate guitar course electric elevation so in this new course we bring together all the elements that make the guitar so awesome we combine everything like scales arpeggios triad double stops and even from finger picking to vibrato basically anything you can think of we bring it together so you can be more free on the entire neck than ever before we're looking at different progressions from multiple viewpoints like a rhythm guitar what can we do with the chords how can we make them as beautiful as we can uh, we go to lead guitar, how can we play the coolest solos on top of these same chord progressions? How can we stop our scales from sounding like scales playing up and down to something that actually sounds amazing with things like phrasing, call and response, target notes, arpeggios and so much more. And then finally we also blur the lines between playing rhythm and lead guitar. We merge everything together where you play chords, embellishments and solos all at the same time on one guitar. Truly making the guitar sound amazing. So the course is designed to help you elevate your guitar playing so you can confidently play by feel, develop your ear and play more expressively than ever before. So more information can be found at electricelevation.com. It would be amazing if you could check it out. But now let's go to the final word about these guitars because I think it's super interesting. I don't think there is such a thing as a bad tone, but there are guitars that can have 
issues resulting into unwanted quirks that negatively impact the tone. And unfortunately, I think that's what we saw on the Squire. The notes are just less stable and although they are really, really bright, somehow there is less clarity, less string separation and less definition. And first I thought it would be the pickups, but I actually think it's everything hardware related, like the inferior plastic nut, the cheaper bridge. And I wonder what exactly it would take to turn that guitar more towards the liking of the 62. So that might be a fun video, so let me know if you want to see that in the comments. Everything else here is just, I mean, it's fantastic. And I guess it's just a matter of taste from that point. I think once you reach a certain level of guitar building, when the guitar is built to last, it just comes down to whatever you think sounds great. And the important thing is that just like this 62 guitar, if someone else picks it up in 60 years from now, it should just be as awesome as it is today or possibly even better. What I do think is that there is a certain quality in these pre-CBS strats or just old instruments that is hard to replicate. There is something in it that you just don't easily see in new instruments. So my Cunetto Relic has just a little bit of that in it, but still it's not the same. And the question is, do you even want it? Because I've also played old strats that I would never ever trade in my life for this very guitar. And this is something you do not always hear, but often these old guitars have some imperfections, some weird quirks, and it's sometimes hard to get used to them because they are just different. I think you shouldn't be held back by the guitar that you play. Any guitar can be turned into something that's useful, that's playable, and that can get you anywhere in life. I'd love to hear from you. Which guitar do you think sounded best? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments and uh, yeah, have a lovely day. And of course, feel free to check out Electric Elevation. All the links are below. I Spend so much time on it and it would be an honor if you can check it out. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Cheers.